Hi guys, welcome back to A Bookish Weekend. My name is Brooke and I haven't been here for like over a year. <laughs> So if you take a look on my channel or if you've been subscribed for a while now, then you'll know that I actually haven't posted a video, I think, since last October, but I haven't posted a bookish video since September last year. I don't know. I know it was a while ago. We'll get into that really quickly, but I have like many reasons, so I'm just going to give you a simple, basic, flat one. So, September last year, I started my first year of university. Um, obviously, that was very anxious for me. That's very anxious for me? I can't speak. That was very, uh, that was an anxious time for me. Stressful. I was very busy, I had a lot on my plate. Books sort of took the back burner a little bit. But also, I just thought like I had to such a perfectionist in making my YouTube videos that I just wouldn't do it because it'd be like too much work that I just wouldn't have the time for it or that I wouldn't be able to or it wouldn't be good enough or whatever. Um, I thought I'd always have to have a full face of makeup, but I'd always have to, you know, be so eloquent and constant all the time. And I'm like, I'm not here to be that serious. I'm here to have fun and make friends and talk about books. Um, so as you can tell, I am not wearing a full face of makeup, I'm wearing very minimal makeup. My hair is a mess that I will be continuously playing with throughout this video. And I don't really know what I'm going to say to be honest, but we're here, we're going to have a fun time. I'm not going to put too much pressure on myself to be uploading like every other day or whatever. I'm going to be uploading as much as I can, but we'll see. I just want to be able to upload videos when I want to and not be so like hard on myself. I hope you guys are okay with that. I hope you guys are like fine and semi happy that I'm back. I mean, none of y'all missed me, I'm sure, but like, I'm back, hi. I'm Brooke, let's be friends, <laughs> right? But anyway, so that's my little waffle at the beginning there. Um, I'm also wearing my like pajamas. Uh, please don't judge me. I'm really just, just, you know, do this for me. <laughs> um, and I'm sorry, I'm gonna keep looking. <laughs> screen that's gonna be really annoying but today we're actually doing a book tag it is October <laughs> um, which means it's the spooky season it is my favorite month of the year I love Halloween I love spooks I just love autumn um, and so today we're gonna to be doing the Halloween song book tag which is by sorry I've got the questions up on my phone um, Nicole over from A Beautiful Chaos of Books so I'll link her original video down below, so go check her out, she's awesome. Um, we started our channels at this like the similar time and just watching her journey is just so inspirational. Like, a booktube career if you will. <laughs> Highly recommend her. The theme of this book tag is that you have 10 questions based on like spooky Halloween songs or theme tunes, um, all spooky related and there are some questions to go with them. So I don't actually read many spooky books, surprisingly, for someone that loves spooks. There really aren't that much spooks on my shelves. But, so my answers to these questions aren't all gonna be like thrillers or horror or scary stories or anything. And there are some on there, but if you're looking for spooky wrecks, this is not the book for you because, I don't know why. I don't, it's not that I get scared, I love spooky things. I just, I haven't found any that like vibe with me, you know? Um, because there's not really much YA and I don't really read adult fiction. The first song is Thriller and the question to go with that one is a book that was an absolute page turner. And so I went, <laughs> it was so hard not to put this book out of all these questions because it is the book I cannot stop thinking about at the moment. I read about this time last year actually. It is the perfect book for October. I love it. It's one of my favourite books. Um, it's by one of my favourite authors, and that is Saw Kill Girls by Claire Legrand. This book, it has queer representation in it. It's a group of badass females. It is spooky and unnerving. It basically, the, I can't remember anyone's main, main character's names, by the way, so we're just gonna try and go through these descriptions as best as I can off the top of my head. But it's basically about a girl that moves to this island, which I believe is like Sawkill Island. There's two other girls on the island. And on this island, for years, girls have been going missing. And these three girls get caught up in the mystery and what's going on. And it's just 
spooky and strange and unnerving and I loved every second of it. I wish I could go back and read this book again for the first time. It was so good. Um, I just, I'm thinking about re-listening to the audiobook actually just because I can't stop thinking about it and I don't know why because I read it ages ago but it's just such a good book I highly recommend so the next song is Somebody's Watching Me a book that gave you the serious creeps and again I wanted to put Saw Kill Girls for this because that book gave me the creeps um but this one the book that I chose I don't know if it gave me the creeps it just sort of put me on edge a little bit it's not exactly spooky or scary, it's just sort of like, that's why I chose this one and that is Contagion by Terry Terry. I actually have the second book here behind me, but I don't have the first book with me. This book is, so we have two main characters, a girl and a guy. The guy's sister, Callie, went missing a little while ago and no one knows what happened to her, but you get insight into her point of view and you can see that something's gone weird, something's up a bit you know, sci-fi-y, paranormal -y. Um, and then the guy and the girl end up meeting because the girl saw Callie on the last day that she was seen. Um, so she goes to the guy and is like, I saw your sister on this day. Um, and then they go looking for her, and as they go looking for her, this epidemic starts breaking out. Um, so it's basically about trying to figure out what happened to the sister, what's causing the epidemic, and all of that stuff. It it was a very quick, fun read. Again, I read this last year, last summer. I do recommend it. I love Terry Terry's writing. It's just so easy and quick to get through. Um, I did give it like over four stars. I don't know if I'd give it that rating actually now, but I have got a lot more critical in my ratings in general. So, I don't know. I do recommend it though. It is a really good book. I am here to continue the series, but I'm awful at finishing series. -es. Series is series anyway, so I wouldn't hold that against the book. But yeah. The next one is Vampire. I bet you hated so much it was soul sucking, i.e. incredibly tedious to get through. I think I've talked about this book before in my channel because I hate it so much. I know it's not Alcata, although that's up there. <laughs> no shade, no tea. Um, obviously if you like any of the books that I don't like that's okay, but this book, I don't think I've ever been more disappointed. Um, and that book is Winter Song by, <sighs> fuck, who's it by? I can't remember, but the book cover will be up here, so <laughs> you can see. Um, I was so excited for this book. It is basically a labyrinth retelling, and if you know me, Labyrinth is one of my favourite films. Um, but this book is so uncomfortable, so boring, so overly flowery. I like flowery writing. This is just to the other level. I don't know why I finished it. I don't know how I finished it. I bought the sequel at the same time expecting to love it. Don't know if I'm going to read it. If I can't finish a book series that I do like then how am I going to finish a book series that I don't like? It was just so disappointing and so painful and I can't think of like one good thing about it. It was just... I like the folklore. That was probably it. It was just... Nah. Nah. Not for me, thanks. Next one is... I Put a Spell on You, a book featuring witchcraft or magic. And this one I have chosen Undead Girl Gang by someone Anderson. <laughs> Katie Anderson? Kate Anderson? No! But man, I'm... I have serious issues, don't I? Lily Anderson! Oh, Winter Song was by S.J. Jones, by the way, since I'm here, I might as well tell you. Undead Girl Gang by Lily Anderson. This book, again, wasn't my favourite book of all time. But I realise as much as I love witches, I don't- I haven't read that many witchy books. I have, like, Serpent and Dove on my shelves. Um... I think that's the only witchy book I have on my show. I love witches, but apparently they're not really in YA that much. Don't ask me why. I love them. They should be in there more. Someone write more, more witchy books for me, please. But Under Girl Gang is about one girl whose best friend has recently died and she doesn't believe it went down as people say it did. She thinks there's something strange about it that her friend got murdered. So her and her friend were into Wicca and witchcraft 
she goes and does a, a, a spell to raise her back from the dead. And instead of just raising back her friend from the dead, she raises these two popular girls that she didn't really get on with that well. And it follows those three under the girls and the main character. Um, finding out what happened, sort of dealing with the fact that they're dead and dealing with grief and mystery. It was all right. It was I think I gave it three stars, um, which I'd say is a solid rating for it. It was entertaining, um, but it wasn't my favourite book of all time. But if you're into that sort of thing, just some fun, quick read, then I do recommend it. Next, we have This Halloween. I don't believe this is Halloween. Um, your favourite treat or snack to eat while reading. My favourite thing ever was Maltesers, so Maltesers for sure. Um, if you don't know what they are, who are you? This is what they look like, they're like chocolate biscuit ball things. Mwah, I love them. Um, but if we're on about specifically spooky snacks, you know there's like chocolate balls you get and they're like, you get those of them in a bag and it's like, they're either like pumpkins or eyeballs. I'm obsessed with them. Don't ask why, it's literally just balls of chocolate in pumpkin wrapping. But it's great, I love them. Yes. Next we have Time Warp. Let's do the Time Warp again. What book or books do you like to return to at this time of year? I don't really read books uh, at all, really. If I reread a book, it's for a specific reason or because it's Daisy Jones and the Six. So I've chosen a film for this question. I can't actually remember the specific title for it, so bear with me. But a film I love, I love, love, love. Duh. Yeah, I did get the title right. And that is Double Double Toil and Trouble. It's featuring Mary Kate and Ashley. It came out in 1993. And I just remember me and my sister watched this all the time. It's such a good film. Uh, can't tell you what it's about. It's about two twins that... It's like a curse or something? Let's see, let's see what this is. Two little girls who discover that their great aunt Sophia has been trapped and cursed by her evil twin sister Agatha. On the 70th of her imprisonment, Sophia will be doomed to the netherworld unless the curse is broken by the magical spell of twins. So yeah, and it's about them trying to save their aunt. Great aunt. It's really good. I love it. The characters are great. It's just so wholesomely Halloween and like it's so good it's so good watch it next hungry like a wolf a book you loved so much you devoured this is like the least spooky book on here and I actually have it on my shelf not on my shelves the next to my shelves because these are the books I haven't read yet and then the ones I have read up it next to my shelves but that book is the places I've cried in public by Holly Bourne this came out recently, I devoured it, it made me sob, it made me scream and just are oh, an emotional wreck after reading this book basically. Trigger warnings for controlling behaviour and sexual assault, yeah I'd say they're the main two. Trigger warnings, controlling behaviour, sexual assault, so be careful, um, but this book is about um, Amelie and Amelie was in a relationship with this guy called Reese and it sort of she thought she was in love with him it was this whirlwind romance um but this book goes through art is takes place after the breakup um and it's sort of her going through and recounting um parts of the relationship and her reflecting on it and so you sort of get a hindsight view on the relationship and it's just so good and so heartbreaking and just I think a necessary read for so many people. It's a very important piece of literature and I think everyone should be reading it if, you know, it's accessible to them and if it is something that they feel comfortable reading. It's just so, so good and so important. Next is number eight, The Addams Family, a book featuring a dysfunctional family. And this one I chose doesn't really have like a blood family, but it has a, you know, a forced family or a chosen family and that is Wilder Girls. This book came out recently, I think. It's not out in the UK yet, but I got a copy at Yelp. I won a copy. God, it was one of my most anticipated books. And I'm just so thrilled to have finally read it. Uh, I really did enjoy this book. I have heard mixed reviews about it. Some people are disappointed by it. I think it was really good. This book is about like a school on an island that is sort of quarantined in because there was this outbreak uh, of some disease, an epidemic, and they're trying to figure out 
what's happening, what the epidemic is, like, yeah, it's just good. And basically the fam, the school uh, sort of has to recover, come together and be a family and cooperate together and the main girls are in it sort of become a family and it's dysfunctional because obviously it's not the best circumstances and it's all a bit up in the air but it's a good book. It's a good book. Sorry, I really did not describe the book very well at all. I'm... Ugh. <laughs> Number nine. Scary Monsters and Super Creeps, a book genre that you're scared or intimidated to pick up. And for this one, I'm going with classics. I hate classics. I don't hate classics. I actually got a classic on my shelves. I own a few. Um, but it's just the writing style. I struggle to get into it. And I really want to read more classics like this one. Um, but it just scares me because I know it's going to take a lot out of me. A lot of mental energy and a lot of concentration. So hopefully I'll get into some more soon, but we'll see. And then number 10, the last question. The Twilight Zone, a book with a completely different and unique premise. You might contradict me here. You might think that this isn't the good a good book for this question. I haven't talked about this book yet on my channel and it's my favourite book of all time now. I know I'm not alone in saying that and it's so basic, but that is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This book came out in January this year, I think. Beginning of this year anyway, if it wasn't January, and just... I love it, man. I love it. I think I've read it three times, four times. I think three. Yeah, I'm gonna go three. But it is so so good it is basically told in i mean everyone knows this book right but i'll tell you about it anyway in case you don't this book is told like in the form oh, i fucking don't know the word so it's told in like a series of like interviews and it's like all like pieced together um an ordinary history is that what it's called something like that and it basically tells the story of this band Daisy Jones and the Six and their rise to fame and their tour and how they fell apart and it's just so good. So much better than I expected it to be. I went in with such low expectations, expecting to hate it. I think I was the only one that went in, went in expecting to hate it. But, oh my god, I was blown away. I was blown away. It is so good. And I think just, obviously I haven't read many adult books since it is an adult book. Um, I wouldn't recommend it to younger readers because it has a lot of like sex and drugs in it. Um, but uh, I think the way it was pieced together, like, in that interview format, uh, and then the way the story was told and what the story was about all together sort of made it quite unique. Again, you might contradict me, but I found it unique, so sue me. But that is it for these questions and this tag. Again, I'll leave Nicole's video down below, so make sure you go check it out. I'm not tagging anyone because no one knows I'm making this video. No one really knows I'm coming out of the dead. I did a poll on Twitter and that was about it. But sorry, this has been such a rambly mess. Um, I would say that I promise that my next video will be better. Uh, but I'm, again, like I said, I'm not putting pressure on myself. So who knows? But please, if you liked this video and you want to see more of my rambly self, hit that subscribe button down below. I promise I will be uploading more often. I don't know how often, but it'll be more often. <laughs> but at least you know that I won't spam your inboxes, right? Your sub boxes. Uh, I'll also leave my links down to my Twitter below, so you can see more from there. I'm always tweeting. Um, but yeah, if you did like this, give it a thumbs up, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!